Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about prokaryotes, those things without nuclei. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the two domains, bacteria and archaebacteria, and their kingdoms, eubacteria and archaea. So let's jump in. For today, again, we're not going to be talking about the eukaryotes. We're going to be talking about these other things that are small and simple. So let's first talk about the first kingdom, archaea bacteria. Archaea bacteria is hard to spell, so don't worry about it as long as you get kind of ish close. Okay? Um, let's talk about what almost everything in that kingdom has in common. They're all unicellular, meaning how many cells? One. Right? And they're all prokaryotes, meaning no nucleus. All right? They have a cell wall. But the interesting thing is they're missing a type of protein, sugar combination molecule, peptoglycan, it's called. And that indicates that it's this type of bacteria because it has a cell wall, but it doesn't have this molecule in it. They can sometimes be things that move and sometimes they're things that don't move. We have a fancy way of saying moving and non-moving called motil and non-motil. Those two things just mean moving and non-moving. We also can review the terms autotroph and heterotroph, meaning makes its own food or has to eat other things. The organisms in this category, these archaebacteria, they could be either. The important thing is they're ancient, meaning they're the first things on Earth. I like to remember that this word sounds kind of like the word ancient, archaic, ancient. And they live in extreme environments because the ancient environment of Earth was super weird and extreme. Meaning there are some examples like some of these things live in hot springs, such as those in Japan that are like way crazy hot, like other organisms would super die. Or geysers, which are also really hot. They could also live deep, deep, deep in the ocean where there's no sunlight. There's very little food. It's super high pressure and very, very cold. Some of these things have even been known to be found in space. So what's interesting is the big differences between this guy and the next thing we talk about are going to be this extremeness that we find in these ancient bacteria. Let's talk about the next category of bacteria, which is called eubacteria. I know this is coming in out of order, but that's okay. So again, we're once or also one-celled, unicellular, without nucleus. But this time we have a cell wall and it has that molecule. So it has this thing. So that's a difference. Does it have that thing or not? Peptoglycan. They can be autotrophs or heterotrophs. Here's a specific example. Algae can be a bacteria. Specifically, this true bacteria called eubacteria. That prefix, eu, means true. They also can eat other things called heterotrophs. So they can be either. They can be moving or non-moving, modal or non-modal. But the big thing is these aren't our ancient bacteria. These are actually our common bacteria that we find on our skin, in our stomach, on our desks, in our chairs, in our mouth. All right. These are things that also sometimes make us sick, like salmonella and strep. We're going to learn about more details about bacteria in general in these next couple slides. Make sure you're trying to notice some of the differences between the different categories. So... Bacteria come in many different shapes, and that's going to be related to their scientific names. For instance, in our chart on our notes, let's notice that there's a picture with lots of round shapes. We call this, uh, I can never pronounce it. So the full word for the example is streptococcus. So this is cocci. I know it's a terrible word, but that means circular or round bacteria. And strep is one of them pictured here the one that gives you a sore throat. We also have bacillus. An example of a bacillus bacteria is E. coli. E. coli, we sometimes hear in the news getting us sick if it is somehow got in our food, and actually E. coli comes from fecal or poo contamination. Ew! The last category looks like spiral noodles, and it's called spirilla, spirals. All right, so those are the three major categories of shapes, and bacteria are sometimes grouped and named by their shape. 
Why do we care about bacteria anyways? Are they all bad? No, they're not all bad. And here's some things that they do that are good. Bacteria are really important to ecosystems because they decompose things. They break down things and recycle our nutrients. We would have a terrible problem running out of water and nitrogen and proteins if we didn't have these things coming to recycle. We also as humans use that property of being able to break stuff down to be able to break down yucky stuff in our wastewater, all right, meaning um, the water that comes from your like sink and toilet and shower bacteria are at the water treatment plant and they clean it so we can reuse that water someday again they also do nitrogen fixation which we learned a long time ago which means that they convert nitrogen to a usable form and that allows other organisms to have nitrogen and use it to make proteins so without bacteria on things like roots of bean plants we wouldn't have enough nitrogen in our environment. They also are frequently used to make food products such as nitrogen do, I mean bacteria do lots of fermentation. So for instance we use bacteria to make yogurt, pickles, sour cream, and kimchi. Wow. All right a lot of bacteria though are known for causing bad things, diseases. Here are some examples of how they do that. They do that by damaging the cells of the host. Remember the host means that's the cell they invade or infect. An example is TB, tuberculosis, and that affects people's lungs. TB is kind of a little scary because we don't always have a good way to treat it, but we try our best and a lot of times it is treatable. They also can be making us sick because they can release toxins or poisons. So sometimes they just hurt the cell by like breaking the cell the cell membrane but sometimes they're releasing chemicals and so for instance strep throat makes your throat hurt because it's releasing a chemical that makes your throat hurt weird how do we avoid bacterial diseases well the biggest way is prevention and it's vaccines just like for viruses and it works very similarly when in the in the syringe or the needle there is going to be a killed or weakened version of the virus after having that weakened or killed part of the bacteria from the shot, your body then mounts a military-like defense called antibodies to be ready to attack any real bacteria that will look similar that ever show up. So that's really important. So for instance, one type of bacteria you avoid a lot is the tetanus bacteria. And you get a tetanus shot about every seven years. And so your body will be able to recognize if that bacteria ever comes to get you if you accidentally stepped on like a rusty nail or something. So vaccines are super important to help prevent really common terrible bacteria. But not every bac vaccine uh, bacteria has a vaccine so sometimes we accidentally do get bacteria that we don't want and so for bacteria we can take antibiotics notice that antibiotics have the word bio in it bio meaning life so antibiotics are chemicals that can kill the bacteria or keep the bacteria from reproducing they tend to attack the bacteria's cell wall or cell membrane but they only work on bacteria because bacteria are cells they are alive viruses are not alive so there is no antibiotics that will kill a virus so if you're taking a antibiotic and you actually have a virus it will not end up making you feel better only if you have a bacteria will a antibiotic make you feel better. Some a really common antibiotics are penicillin, ampicillin, and amoxicillin. These antibiotics are really important that you take them all the way. We learned when we did evolution that you can accidentally help make bacteria more resistant by selecting for the ones that are mutated already that have natural resistance and making them the majority of the population so we want to be careful that we take all of our antibiotics great job guys we'll talk more about bacteria and make sure we don't get it confused with viruses in class see you next time